This is a new ASUS ZenBook 14. It's just 14.9 millimeters thin, and it's powered by AMD's new Kraken Point CPU. It's still built on the Zen 5 architecture, but unlike the high-powered Strix Point chips, this one is supposed to target power efficiency. Um, so inside, it's rocking the AI7350, uh, which, in my opinion, is sort of like an ideal hybrid for anyone looking for a balanced laptop with solid battery life. Now, not too long ago, I tested the VivoBook S14 with the Ryzen AI 9 365 CPU, and while it crushed our benchmarks, it was drawing nearly 53 watts of power, which is absolutely wild for a thin and light machine. But the result of that was pretty terrible battery life. The ZenBook 14, on the other hand, should fix that. Now, pricing for this laptop is expected to land around $1,100 after tariffs, though that could also change. We are living in uncertain times. The configuration that I have over here features an AI7350 CPU with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD paired with a 1200p OLED display. This unit is only gonna be available through Asus's online store, but there is supposedly a Walmart exclusive version dropping sometime next week at the same price, except it comes with double the memory. So I feel like that's a better bargain in my opinion. So yeah, it's definitely not cheap, but unfortunately we are living in different times and prices for tech, it's expected to go up from here. Uh, so we'll keep an eye out uh, for pricing and update you guys in the description uh, if there are any deals. From the outside, the ZenBook 14, it sort of sticks out with the same design language um, as the previous generations. So both the top and bottom lid, they're made out of metal while the keyboard deck is still made out of a mix of magnesium, alloy, and uh, aluminum components. Uh, and it feels okay. Uh, there's still a little bit of keyboard flex, and this jade black finish is an absolute fingerprint magnet, so you're gonna have to spend quite a bit of time trying to keep this thing clean. The screen doesn't flex all that much, although there is quite a bit of wobble, so that's something to keep in mind. I will say overall from a build quality standpoint, this thing is a step above the VivoBook S14, but it's not quite the level of that premium factor that you get with the ZenBook S14. I feel like this laptop is, it's just polished. It's more refined compared to the ZenBook 14. I know, they're both ZenBooks. This one is just has an S in front of the 14. Confusing names from Asus, but just wanted to give you guys a breakdown as to how these laptops feel. This laptop weighs around 2.65 pounds, which is pretty light for a 14 inch laptop. It'll easily fit inside your backpack, no problem. And the included 60 watt USB-C power adapter is super compact and it's lightweight as well. It also supports fast charge, so you can charge up the laptop to 60% in under an hour. Moving on to the interior space. Uh, this layout, again, it feels very familiar if you've used any other ZenBook laptops. Uh, one thing I did notice is that ASUS did remove a dedicated, or at least a dedicated section where you had access to the webcam, the mic mute switch, and having access to some of the controls. That said, the keyboard, it's pretty solid. It has 1.4 millimeters of key travel, which gives you great tactile feedback. It's great for typing out notes and everything. It is backlit in white, though the brightness output could be better as some keys, they just don't light up evenly as some of the others. The trackpad has a glass surface, which again is super smooth. I haven't really noticed any issues with that. And it features those smart gestures from the VivoBook laptops. Now for ports, considering the chassis is only 0.6 inches thick, ASUS managed to squeeze a decent selection. So you get a full size USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port, not Gen 2, which is really unfortunate for a laptop in 2025. Uh, and on the right-hand side, you have a full-size HDMI port, headphone jack, and a couple of USB-C ports with a mix of 3.2 Gen 2 and USB 4 speeds. And this is what the webcam looks like. It is a 1080p sensor. Asus has also implemented a physical privacy shutter switch right over here, which works out pretty well, and it does a really good job with exposure uh, compensation. The microphone sounds decent as well. Should get you through most of your meetings. No problem. The speakers are, again, average. They are bottom facing, so I wouldn't expect the greatest output from these laptops within this orientation. So uh, yeah, I would keep your expectations low. Just rely or stick to external headphones for a really good media consumption experience. If we shift gears to the display, Asus is offering a couple of options here. So both of them are OLED. Uh, with different resolutions. There's a high-end 3K 120 hertz panel, and then there's this version that I have over here, which is a 1200p 60 hertz screen. Now, to be honest, this isn't the sharpest panel that I've come across. It's not bad, but from a normal viewing distance, I could still make out individual pixels. So if a screen sharpness is high on your priority list, you should probably upgrade to the 3K option. But that said, uh, everything else about this display is, I would say fairly average. 
Uh, it offers good color gamut uh, considering it's an OLED panel. Uh, so the colors are vivid. The brightness is underwhelming though. Our sample topped out around 360 nits, which is usable for indoors, but not really ideal for outdoor environments. And it's also a highly reflective panel. So yeah, it, it's totally unusable if you take this thing outside. Now, one of the things that I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into, especially with laptops, OLED laptops in particular, is PWM dimming. PWM, or pulse width modulation, essentially controls brightness by rapidly flickering the screen on and off. It sort of helps maintain the OLED's color accuracy compared to uh, standard DC dimming found on LCD panels. Now, most people won't notice this flicker, um, but if you're sensitive to it, especially in low light environments, it's something worth knowing about, right? So at 100% brightness, the Zenbook 14 handles it pretty well. Uh, what you're looking for is thinner black bars uh, from our test footage. But as you dial down the brightness output, you'll notice those thicker black bars start to come out, which means those LEDs are turning off for longer periods of time. That could bother some users over extended use. Now, just for fun, I also compared it to the M4 MacBook Air, which uses an LCD panel. Again, this relies on DC dimming, so the brightness output stays constant. There's no flickering, it's just smooth and steady. Now, if you get underneath the hood, it's pretty straightforward. Once you remove the Torx screws, you'll notice that well, uh, the memory is soldered onto the PCB, which is unfortunate. So you'll uh, only get one shot at configuring the specs before you buy this laptop. The primary NVMe SSD is right over here and the drive speeds are pretty good. Plus there are no storage expansion slots. When it comes to performance, this laptop puts some really solid numbers. Now you have to keep in mind that the Ryzen AI7 350 has two fewer physical cores than the higher end AI9 365. But even so, having 16 threads or having access to all these threads in a laptop in this form factor is still pretty impressive. It just really shows what AMD's Zenith architecture is capable of. For comparison, we'll be stacking this thing up against the VivaBook S14 with Intel's Core Ultra 5 226V. We have the ZenBook S14 with the Ultra 7 258V. And of course, the VivaBook S14 featuring the Ryzen AI 9365. And just to keep things interesting, we'll also be throwing in the MacBook Air M4. Asus has baked in four performance modes. There's Whisper, Standard, Performance, and Full Speed. We'll be focusing on Standard and Full Speed as these give us a solid idea of how the chip performs at 29 watts versus 34 watts. Just keep in mind that full speed mode can get quite loud on this laptop, so I would highly recommend using headphones. So those 16 threads on the AI7 350, it gives the ZenBook a noticeable edge over some of the other Windows laptops with Intel chips. And that makes sense because Intel, they took a bold risk with Lunar Lake by eliminating SMT, which really hurts multi-threaded performance. That said, it's not too far off from the AI9365 processor in the VivaBook S14. One interesting observation is that when you enable full speed mode, it doesn't bring up that much of a performance uplift over standard mode, even though it pumps an extra five watts into the chip. Single thread performance on these new Zen 5 CPUs is impressive. Honestly, this should be a wake up call for Intel, but what really caught my attention is just how fast that M4 MacBook Air is. It just tops the charts in R24 while just saving back 12 watts. For everyday office work, uh, this thing handles everything quickly and smoothly, but again, you probably won't notice a major difference compared to the other thin and light laptops in this roundup. But when it comes to heavier multi-core workloads, the AI7350 lands comfortably between Intel's Luna Lake chips and AMD's own AI9365 processor. It's more than capable in apps like Blender or any kind of transcoding that can fully utilize those threads. Now for GPU accelerated tasks, the integrated Radeon 860M does fall a bit short. Uh, it has four fewer compute units compared to the Radeon 880M on the AI9365, so you'll see slightly lower performance. Shifting to more creative focus workloads, this thing actually holds on its own pretty well. But that M4 is in a league of its own when it comes to optimization. AMD's chips, they do pretty well, but they just lag a bit behind in video editing apps like Adobe Premiere and DaVinci Resolve. Now that could be due to the software optimization or it's just simply because AMD it just struggles to match Intel's efficiency and speed in encoding tasks. So if your workflow relies heavily on video editing, you might wanna look into Lunar Lake or even Apple's M4 options because they just offer a smoother, faster experience. Um, you could still get away with some creative editing on the ZenBook 14, but uh, I wouldn't completely rely on it. Switching to gaming performance, I should heavily emphasize that this isn't a gaming laptop, so I would recommend keeping your expectations in check. But if you're looking to just play something casual during your downtime, this laptop, it's definitely capable of it. So at 1200p using medium settings, 
with the Radeon 860M at 34 watts, it puts out some decent frame rates with very respectable 1% lows. AMD's RDNA 3.5 is decent, but Intel's XE2 in Lunar Lake just clearly brings something serious to iGPU gaming. It's impressive to see the kind of frame rates you're getting with a 28 watt chip. At the end of the day, gaming on integrated GPU is always a balancing act, right? It really depends on the game that you play. So heavier titles like Cyberpunk or Rainbow Six Siege will push the limits on all these laptops. Unfortunately, the ZenBook just ends up staying at the bottom of our charts for the most part. Now, if you remember, the Ryzen AI 9 365 and the ViewBook S14 was ridiculously fast, but that came at a huge cost, which was power draw. The chip was chugging, again, 53 watts, which was bananas. And the result was that the battery life was pretty terrible. It's definitely nowhere near the rest of the laptops that we tested. But with Kraken Point inside the ZenBook 14, it sort of flips that narrative completely. So for lighter tasks like web browsing, we managed to squeeze close to 18 hours of battery life, making it one of the longest lasting laptops in our entire roundup. And you have to keep in mind that this machine still rocks the same 75 watt hour battery as the VivaBook. Now, even during our 4K YouTube playback test, the ZenBook posted some excellent numbers. While Lunar Lake's media engine might be a bit more efficient in decoding and streaming scenarios, the ZenBook still held on its ground pretty well with competitive runtimes. Now here's where it gets really bizarre. In our multi-core workload, this laptop somehow scales down its power usage to just eight watts. Not initially, but it's just gradually gets to a point where it's like 50% or 25% of battery life. It just keeps going down. I think the minimum we saw was around five watts. And that led to nearly seven hours of sustained runtime, which is pretty wild. It's like this thing morphed itself into a MacBook Air and it just became super efficient. Now we've never seen something like this on Windows laptops before during heavy workloads. So yeah, something to keep in mind. But how does that translate to performance on battery? Honestly, it's shockingly solid. Uh, for the first 25% of its battery life, performance is very close to what you get when it's plugged in. It looks like Asus and AMD have done some serious tuning because the performance gap is nearly on par with uh, something like the M4 MacBook Air, which is the gold standard for battery optimized performance. So that's the Asus ZenBook 14 with AMD's new Kraken Point CPUs. This is a very interesting laptop, right? Because it ends up being competitive within Asus's own product portfolio. Because if you look at the VivoBook S14, it's not too far off in terms of pricing and specs, whereas you also get way better performance on the VivoBook, though with the costs of power efficiency. It's also not too far off from the MacBook Air M4. Again, for that thousand to twelve hundred dollar price point, it's very competitive for laptops. And I feel like this thing is gonna struggle a little bit to compete within that price range. If you can find this for sub $1,000, then we might be having a very different conversation um, because this thing, it's built pretty well. You've got awesome performance and the battery life, I think that's the biggest highlight for these new Kraken Point CPUs. Asus, they, they just delivered something that just lasts for a really long time. So if that's something that you're looking for, uh, then yeah, this thing is pretty solid. On that note, thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.